Well, the first step is always going to be appointing and organizing your leaders. Now, like with all corporations, nonprofits are going to need a board of members. Now, it's not necessary and required in each state to have three members, but generally it is a recommendation to have three members on your board due to the fact that the IRS filing tax or the IRS tax exemption is going to require the three board members. It's better to start with your three as this will avoid any unneeded and additional paperwork as well as additional fees to the state to change. Next, you're going to need to appoint your registered agent. Now, what is a registered agent? A registered agent is going to be your liaison in a sense between your business and the government. They're the ones who are going to receive all official notifications from government agencies, such as service of process. Now there's two types of registered agents that can be appointed. A registered agent can be an individual, which this person will be on file with state record as a public liaison to receive all documents. Whereas there's going to be professional registered agents. Most nonprofits do elect to proceed with a re professional registered agent due to the fact that it will be an actual company handling these paperwork for you in professional manner, as well as providing that professional address for your company for the public. Now, next, you're going to need your articles of organization. And this is going to be your birth certificate in a sense for your company. Now, your articles must include a purpose and dissolution language. Now, the re reason for these is your purpose language is what's going to be shown to the state to show that your organization is going to be benefiting a charitable, educational, or a religious type purpose and not one for the public benefit of members within the organization. And then a dissolution is going to what's is what's going to show to the state that upon dissolution of the company, all lawful assets are what's going to be distributed among other organizations within a similar purpose of your own. Now you'll have your bylaws. Your bylaws are going to be in a sense a guide or an outline of how the rules of the company are going to operate by. It's very brief and more so just has basic rules that each company has. You're gonna have a conflict of interest policy and this conflict of interest policy is going to be shown, not necessarily required to the state to file your nonprofit, but it's recommended. And the reason why that is, is because this is what's going to be used to show when conflicts arise within the organization, they will be handled within a reasonable manner and not one that's going to benefit the private gain of a member or trustee. Now your EIN. The EIN is going to be a social security number in a sense for your company. Very simple to obtain, very straightforward. You can apply directly online on the IRS website, or you can even have professional online services handled for you. Now your tax exemption. Your tax exemption is going to be one of the most important things that your nonprofit can operate by or obtain. This is what's going to be the most common of the 501c3s. There's two types. There's going to be a long form and a short form. A 1023 is what they go by. And a 1023 long form, what's included into it, it's for businesses that are going to operate as a church, businesses that are going to operate as hospitals, and companies that are going to make more than fifty per year, fifty thousand dollars per year within revenue. Now, what's required to have these is generally four things. You're going to need a copy of the application. You're going to need a copy of your articles of organization, the bylaws for your company, and your conflict of interest. Now, depending on the type of nonprofit you are, there are going to be other questions that the IRS is going to need, such as the excuse me, such as the fundraising programs that are going to be needed or they're going to be done by your nonprofit. It's also going to need two to three years of financial data for your company. And then as well as if you're going to be paying compensation to employees, individuals, or trustees within your organization as well. Then there's the 1023 easy form. Now the short form is going to be a lot less work. The short form, what's involved in this one is more so for localized nonprofits on a smaller scale. Um, this nonprofit or this application, again, is very easy and requires one four things. You're going to need your board of directors. You're going to need your NTEE code, your mission statement for your nonprofit, and then a few questions the IRS is going to need to know regarding your classification. Now, the filing fee for each for the long form is 600, and the filing time can take an upwards of six to eight months. Now, for the easy form, the filing fee is 275. 
and the filing time frame can range anywhere from four to six weeks for approval. Now, your state level exemptions. You've become a nonprofit tax exempt organization. What's your next step? Well, you would want to be approved within your state for your state exemptions. Now, your state exemptions, this is going to, in a sense, like your nonprofit or your federal tax exempt organization, it's going to help avoid state fees. These can include sales tax, use tax, um, charging sales tax on small items for your nonprofit, for your fundraisers, such as it can be shirts or maybe bake sales that you'll have. And then as well, this is going to allow you to purchase goods and services without paying sales tax. Now, not everything is going to fall under that, that exempt category. Ultimately, it is going to be items that are used directly for your organization's purpose. For instance, you can't go and purchase a brand new PlayStation for your home, but if you want to purchase a PlayStation for your business for a raffle for a nonprofit to feed homeless individuals, that would be something that would be considered as a tax exempt item. Now, lastly, you're going to have donation solicitation. Now, what is this? You've become tax exempt federally, you've become tax exempt within your state, and now you want to start soliciting funds. Now, donation solicitation, or a charitable solicitation rather, this is what's going to be required by the state to be filed so that you can now start openly soliciting or soliciting funds within each state. Now, this is going to be something very simple in regards to the filing. The filing is generally a paper filing that's submitted within the state that you are going to be operating. Now, is every state required to be filed? Ultimately, you're going to want to file in each state that you yourself are going to be operating. Now, most nonprofits don't necessarily go throughout one state to another, they stay within one. But if you are going to be operating in states such as you are an operation or your company is formed in Texas, but you wanna go and have another base here in Arizona, that is going to be a filing that's going to be done so that your business will remain in compliant with state and government agencies. Now, yes, it is sometimes can be a, ta or a time consuming task, but ultimately by keeping your business in compliant, it is one that will be well worth the efforts. Now, lastly, oh, your local licensing and permits. Now, at the end of the day, you are a tax exempt nonprofit, but you're still going to be regulated like a normal business. So there are going to be additional certificates and permits that your nonprofit is going to need to operate. We have a company within ours that we have started under the name of America's Glean Seafood. Now, they obtain seafood and food that's not necessarily suitable for grocery stores or restaurants, but it is suitable for food banks. There's different permits that are required that they have to obtain. And in a case of a one-off permit, now let's say your company is going to do a one-time bake sale or a one-time sale for some foods, excuse me. Generally, what is going to happen is even though this is just going to be a one-time service, there is still going to be different health permits that you're going to have to obtain. So even though it may be a one-time, always remain, always remember that one-off permits will still be remembered for you or needed for your business.